signed up for that lecture. I only need one set of notes at the end. Um, so you can work together and hopefully that's less work. Um, and really what I want is if I have some notes, like these notes I've already produced, what I want is you to turn these into a latte with more words and stuff, explanation. So and hopefully if you've listened to class or seen the video and you have these notes, it should not be too hard to convert one into the other. Um, so it just, just takes some time, but it forces that you learn that sub subject a little bit. Um, one thing to note is I do not have anyone. So I'm, I'm going to lecture on IO efficient graph algorithms today, and I move some other lectures around. And I don't have anyone signed up for this. So are you want to volunteer? OK, great. Um, great. Um, OK. Um, so I'll add that to that later. OK, so, so that's, um, again, the, the lectures, the video for the last lecture are on YouTube, but I haven't fixed, fixed the link. If someone else is also an editor volunteer, then we both can work together and uh, prepare the most of this. Uh, yeah, so, so this one will probably, this will be a bigger thing. Okay. Uh, so if you can, if someone else wants to work with you, then you can do that as well. This is, okay. this all have more material on this, okay. and kind of trickier material in this lecture. So I'll, to, not, hopefully not too bad, but, uh, uh, you know, it's probably above, about two thirds of the lectures I have two scribes for. This is by me. Okay. And that two thirds. All right. Um, okay. So uh, we're still working in this model of the IRE efficient um, uh, algorithms, and this will be the last lecture here, and then we'll move on to streaming. Um, again, there's no class next Wednesday, other than the introductory streaming um, lecture next week Friday. Um, Oh, and also, I, I feel a little bit less bad having lectures Friday late afternoon because I found out GradSAC is going to be hosting something most Fridays at 6 o'clock after this. So if you're going to that, then you're already already here. So it's not too bad. Um, so, uh, um, OK, so we're in this highly efficient model. Just for you, your, your data is too big to fit in RAM. So you have to store your data on, on disk. And then when you do that, the biggest bottlenecks are these block movements called an I.O. from disk into the RAM, where you can then do fast random access and, and doing stuff with the CPU. And all this stuff between the RAM and the CPU is essentially free in this model, because this is really the bottlenecks. We're going to focus on this single thing, minimizing the movement of this data. And the data is moved in blocks of size B, and this B is a very big number. So we're, we want to put this in our bounds. And the, the size of the memory is how many data sets fit in the memory. And you have m over b blocks that fit in, in the memory. So again, the bounds are for sorting. You have o of n over b with some log base m over b. And scanning, which is linear, is n over b. Both of these are much less, like much, much less than o of n. Divided by b is really, is really a big difference here even with this log factor, because this base of the log is really good. OK, so um, today we're going to talk about how to do these highly efficient algorithms on graphs. Um, and so this is a bit more, more um, advanced sort of topic. And you need certain data structures, which, which I haven't really told you about already. So I'm going to start by just stating and I'll rough, very quickly sketch how this works. Um, a, an important IO efficient data structure, um, um, the priority queue. Right, so, so you've, you've hopefully learned about a priority queue in a data structures class. Um, it basically has, you, you basically need two operations. Um, you're, um, you're going to insert. And with, uh, when you insert, you're going to have some sort of key, and then you have you can put some other stuff in there too, some other other data with that um, thing. And you're going to essentially sort by this key. So you know you. 
And so then the other operation you have is you're going to delete um, min. What this does is it takes the, of all the data that's stored in here, it takes the one with the smallest key and returns this thing and removes it from the key. Okay. Um, the smallest item by uh, uh, but by the value of the key. And so there have been um, the, so what's known how efficiently to do this is you you can do something that of size is linear. So you have n data elements in the in the in the priority queue. And so the size is n over d blocks. This is the number of blocks you need. Um, and so if you want to do either of these operations, insert or um, delete min, th these can be done in 1 over b log m over b n over b amortized. Okay, so this amortized again means that Let's say you're you're going you're going to do a um, um, n of these inserts and about n of these um, delete mins, and then you're going to look at all the costs and then divide by n, right? And that's th this is the time per operation. So this value is going to be much less than one, much less than one I O per operation. You got one over b here. So basically, you could use this um, to sort. Mm -hmm. Right? You can just take all of your data sets, put them in, and then delete them out and put them into a stack or queue every time you delete them. Right? And this will give you the same bound as sorting. If I put an N on top here instead of a 1, it's the same bound here to sort. Um, just, so, I mean, what I don't like here is that it's a priority queue. What's the implementation? This is an abstract that does actual priority queue. Yeah. Concrete implementation of priority queue is heap. We're probably talking about heap here. So it's because heap can be constructed in O of n in RAM. Right? Yeah, right, right, right. So, so, it's, so you can't do it over n. When you, you can't sort. Off. Yeah. No, yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah, it was, it'll still take. So the insert operation. So, it, like you could you could put them all in in O of n in RAM. Um, but here you need uh, this much time. To so now this, is if they were this is basically heap. Well, um, okay. So, so so here's a there's a there's a version by R in '94, um, which is called the buffer tree, and so it looks actually like a B tree, but it is kind of doing some operations to lazily. So if if you have if if you have a binary tree. You, you can do these insert and delete min if you can keep it balanced. Right? You can always insert something in a binary tree, keep things ordered in, in log in time. This is in memory. And you can remove the last, you can delete anything, including the first thing, and rebalance and also in, in log in time. So this is the, the analog of some form of binary tree. And how this works is you have this, this tree which has the, the root and it has all of these you know, something like M over B splits, and each of these is is also a tree, um, and so forth. And so each of these has M over B splits, and then you have um, the leaves down here, which which don't have any splits. Each of these is just a block full of data. Okay, um, and then in addition, on each of these. So th this is not m over b, it's kind of theta m over b so by m over b divided by 3 or something. So, so for each of these um, nodes, and th this includes the root, you also have a buffer. Um, you know, th this is for each of these, but not on the leaves. This buffer is, is going to be size m over b also. And what happens is when you insert something, what you do is you, you just put it in the buffer. 
And when the buffer is full, then you process it and you split it. Okay? And, and by process it, some of them will go to this tree, and I just put them in the buffer until the buffer is full. So I don't do anything with them until I need to. Okay? And so are then when the I... Buffers typically yeah, but what RAM then? Or? The, the, the buffer is also in memory. Th this one might be in RAM. Um, this occupies a constant fraction of your RAM if the root is. But this one is stored in memory, and you only recall it if you're going to do some operations on this particular node. This node. Oh, oh will when you say it's in memory, it's in disk memory. No, when I say memory, I mean it's uh, it's in in RAM. Memory, RAM. I mean, I mean okay. this part. Disk means this part. Okay. Okay. So, so, so you, you're saying you're saying the buffer is not in RAM; it's in memory. And I was trying to make sure I understood you. Uh, did I say that? Okay. It's in. It's it's stored. Um, this one is probably stored on disk. There's one of these at each of these M over B nodes, right? That one level down. Mm -hmm. Right. And this was also this is the AB tree. Yeah, but the only what's the property relation between the nodes? Like the the, the left and the right so side the, the have to be smaller. Everything here is smaller than everything here, mm -hmm. and this one is bigger than this everything here, but smaller than here. So the buffer when it gets in this buffer, you know it's smaller than everything in any of these trees as before. Okay. And now these buffers take extra space, but because you don't put them on the leaf nodes, and the leaf nodes are also big enough, there really aren't that many buffers. Because it kind of, it's, you get a lot fewer at each level up. So, and, and everything, there's some details I'm not going to go through, but everything works out and you get, you get these bounds. Okay, so, so, I, so, so this is all I'm going to say about the, uh, uh, um, about the IO priority queue. But this, we're, we're going to use this like in, in lots of ways in the, in the graph numbers. So this is a very important data structure. And this is, there's some efficient version of a IRO priority queue implemented in TPI. So if you want to use the library, you can use, use their implementation. Um, there's no, like, there's not, you don't know the implementation that would be there's similar. No, what? You, you don't know of any implementation that would be similar to HEAP. I'm not sure how the because best this, implementations yeah. are. Yeah. Because this seems as still a lot of managing. It, it, it might be. Yeah. Um, I know the one in TPI, I believe, is implemented by Peter Sanders, who is like a professor in Germany who's very good at implementing things like um, really the right way, complicated things. And I don't know the details of how he did it. It may be something like this buffer tree. It may be something closer to the heat button. I'm not sure. Um, but th this, this took some. This, you know, was not obvious to, to get this to work out. There was I/O algorithms, and people wanted to know how to do this. And there was an earlier version than this, but it was messier than this algorithm. Um, so this was a fairly so these easy bonds from the buffer tree implementation. Yeah, yeah, but th there may be other implementations with the same facts. Okay. And I don't think you can do better than this. Okay. Um, I, I, okay. So. We're going to mainly focus on a particular graph algorithm, which is on a very simple sort of graph. Um, and the, gra the algorithm is called um, list ranking. And it's going to seem like a very simple problem, but it's going to pull out a lot of the challenges with dealing with graphs. And we'll see some very common techniques for dealing with them. And then I'll mention how you can extend the techniques for this onto, onto other more general sorts of graph problems as well. Not all graph problems, but on some large class of things. So, um, okay, so, so the input to this is basically a, um, a um, the, the input is a um, linked um, list of, of size and Okay, but the problem is the linked list has not necessarily been, been stored um, efficiently on your block partition. Okay, so so so, um, so, so, so what you're going to have is you're going to have these these nodes v1, v2, v3, v4, and and you're going to have a link forward from each node. Into the next one. 
right? So, so each. Oh, so it only needs to be a singly linked list. Yeah, so it's a singly, singly linked list, and each data element looks like this. It's a node and a pointer to the location of the next single list. However, the blocks are not organized based on the linked list. So it's going to have, um, you know, V1 and and the and the pointer of V1. Then it's going to have V, you know, 42 and the pointer from 42. So this points to node 43, but 43 could be on um, somewhere else on a, on a different block, right? So I, if I want to just scan this list, I want to go here, then jump to this node, it's going to take um, O of N IOs instead of O of N over B IOs. And we want to get things that look more like O of N over B. We're really going to get bounds that look like the sorting bound. And we're going to use the, um, the priority queue um, in, in several ways to do this. Okay. So now the goal is to um, so is is to assign each um, node v a rank, um, which equals the number of um, proceeding um, items in linked list. Plus one. Okay. I'll add a plus one. It'll make the stuff a little simpler, right? So the, the the rank of this one is one. The rank of this one is two. The rank of this one is three. You know, now I have a labeled v1, v2, v3, but I don't actually know those numbers. Okay. So those numbers are not given to me. I'm just given this link structure. Um, I don't even if the first one I see, I don't even know if it's the first one. I don't know if something's pointed to it. Right. So so you can see why. This is, is a graph problem. This is a very simple graph, right? You have the nodes, you have these n nodes, and you have n minus one edges between them. And things are stored by node and edge nodes. So we don't, as input, have control over how the nodes and edges are stored. If you have a linked list, there is an obvious way how to store them. And if you can assign, if you can construct this rank value, um, this R of V value, this rank value, then you can just run a sorting algorithm on top of this and, and order them in the right way. Once you've ordered them, things are a lot easier. Now, if you have a graph, um, you somehow want to get it into a structure so things are easier, so they're organized better. And things become, um, so for, for more general graphs, it's not always clear what the right structure is. So part of the challenge is, um, figuring out what is a good way to order the things on disk. And the other challenge is getting from and not necessarily ordered the way you want for your current operation to one of those orderings. And so often you'll assume that you've done some operation like list ranking on the graph and you assume it's ordered in some nice way and then you can do other things more quickly. Um, okay, so, so I'll, I'll give a few more examples as we go on, but I just want to foreshadow where this is going. So once we've constructed this rank, um, then you know, um, you know, it's sorting, you know, in sort and IOs, right? So, so this is really the key step in order to figure out how to how to sort this. this rank. Okay, so I'm going to come. What's the word there after the number sign? I can't read it. Uh, rank uh, number. Um, proceed. C. It maybe should be uh, proceed. Um, right, is it? So proceed is a different word. Isn't it? Predecessor or something. Yeah, so it's P R E, maybe. Maybe that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sometimes my my spelling is not great. Uh, are you laughing at me? No. Um, no, that's why we have spell checker software right. and grammar yeah, yeah. to help with this. Right, so, um, okay, so. In order to solve this problem, I'm going to first solve a, a different problem, which we're going to use as a, as a sub-problem here. Um, so this is called um, 
independent um, and, and set. Okay, it's going to have the same the same input here. Um, And so the, the output is going to be a, a set i of size um, greater than n over 4. Okay. Um, so no to um, b and b prime and i are adjacent. Okay, so an independent set here would be, you know, V1 and V3 would be an independent set, but V1 and V2 would not. Okay, and I want it to be essentially a constant fraction of, of, the, of the full set. Okay, so I could have one, there is one of size N over 2, that one will be hard to find. There's, there's an algorithm that will be just as fast as this that can find one of size N over 3, but it's a bit more complicated. So I'm going to give a very simple, simple way of doing this. Um, I'm going to give a randomized way. There's a way that's deterministic and gets n over 3. But it's, you know, it would take a little bit longer to explain. OK. So and, and this algorithm is going to look like a simpler version of all the other algorithms um, that we're going to do. What it's going to um, do here is it's going to make several, yep. So. All right, a few questions later, just interrupt me at this point. Um, so it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to make several scans over this data set. And this is in, the, in this adversarial order. And in, on the scans, it's going to maintain a priority queue and put something in the priority queue. And the priority queue will allow us to essentially pass information to different parts of the list. Okay. Um, so, let's, let's, let's see how this works. So, on, so, so, um, so, so for each um, V, what I'm going to do is I'm going to as assign, um, let's call this P of V equals 0 or 1 at random. So I'm going to flip a coin, assign it a 0 or a 1. Okay, and then I'm also going to um, put, uh, I'm going to insert into a priority queue, and so the key, um, the key is going to be equal to the, um, the successor of, um, of, of this thing V. Um, and I'm going to have in also this value T of V. Okay. So I can put, now th this is a pointer value. Okay. So now I'm going to assume that I'm going to scan over the blocks in the sequential order they're stored in memory. I have, a, I, the thing I know about the blocks is that I know the, the essentially the pointer to the first elements of each block. So I can, I can retrieve them in the order that they're stored in memory. Um, so now I can, and I know that, so if I know this, uh, this, um, this, this value of the pointer, I can, I can retrieve it at the right point when I'm scanning over it. So there, the blocks do have an inherent ordering to them. And I can access that order based on the pointer. Okay. So, so it's kind of this. This, if you if you saw this without this explanation, this this may be confusing. If it's still confusing, it, maybe you'll see what I do on the on the next game. See how this passes is really passing that information. Okay. So now I'm going to make this other. This is all I do on the first scan. In the other scan, um, I'm going to say. Um, Um, so, um, so I'm going to do a delete 
um, min of the um, priority queue. And this is going to get out a value t. And because I've ordered them, um, so I, I, I'm going to skip this on the first step, but on, on, the, on the second node, uh, wait, actually, yes, yeah, so <laughs> since I've ordered them, um, I also need to store in here uh, v. Um, yeah, no, 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 I, I don't need to store this. So, okay, so, so if the key, so we're if the key matches my current, does not match my current location, it means I've got the first thing in the list, and so I need to pay special attention to that. But otherwise, the first thing I pop off will be the first thing I'm reading in my scan of the blocks. Okay? Um, so I'm, and I'm going to get this value t, which was the 0 or 1 from before. Okay? Um, now, if t equals 0, um, and um, t of v, which is the current thing I'm at, is equal to 1, Right? Then I put I in, or I, I, I put V in I. And this I is actually going to be, um, this is going to be stored as a stack, uh, no, as a, as a queue. Not a priority queue, just a regular queue. Okay? So, uh, so, so this is the algorithm. All the elements in I are going to be stored in the order that they are stored in the blocks, in the right order. And I claim it's going to be an independent set. Um, and on average, the size, the expected size is at least n over 4. If I, I can keep a counter to and if the size is less, I can go back and uh, I can go back and run it again with different randomness. And after a small number of times, I'll get something large enough. But it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll at least be large enough on average. Um, OK, so, so, so do people believe this is going to be an independent set? I mean, after division, it's going to be independent. So the, the set i is going to be independent. Right? Let's look at an example. So, I'm going to have these things in order, uh, and I'm just going to write down their t values, right? 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so which things will be picked out by this audit? So, so assume this is the linked list order, okay? Um, so what I'm going to say is I'm putting it in i if the thing that points to it has a value 0, and its value is 1. Okay? So the thing points to it has value 0, its value is 1. I can put this one in the list. This one's value 1, but the thing point to it is not 0. So not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. This one qualifies. This one qualifies. This one qualifies, and this one does. Right? So. Yeah, so I put it in the independent set if the predecessor is value 0 and its value is 1. So this one has predecessor 0, but its value is 0. This one has predecessor of 1, but its value is 1. Yeah? Are you sure you can do this with a singly linked list? Then? Don't you think you so what I've done is I've used this priority queue to pass this information to the next on the next scan. On the next scan, because I've ordered things in the order they appear in the linked list, I have with every with every element, I also have stored its um, the the value t of its predecessor in the linked list order. I've passed that through the priority queue. What's a pointer here? So a pointer is the location in memory, um, or maybe virtual memory, but some a numerical value of the location of the next node in the linked list. And that's some, here it lives in some block. Each yeah, block lives so, in a location in memory. So you have, you have nonced 
no, no restriction that it has to point to a higher. It could point, point backwards, that's correct. It could point back there, even though the element in the list is. In fixed. fact, about half of them will point backwards if I did it randomly. Okay. Right? But I made a second scan here. So the first scan fills up the priority queue. It gets them in the right order. So the priority queue, they're sorted by key, which is the, is the pointer value. So the first one in the sorted order of the priority queue will be the first one in the block scanning order. So when I scan again, I, the first thing in the priority queue will be the, have correspond with the key of the, the, the first thing in the, in the block order. And stored with this was information about the thing that came before it. Right, so I've, I've managed to pass information on the list with the second scan of the data using the priority queue. I can pass information along the pointers. Uh, when you see the successor option, successor means the, um, the node which has the, which is in the order of the linked list or in the order of the block? In order of the linked list, the linked list order. So I'm, I'm passing information up on the linked list order through the priority queue and by waiting for another scan. And by doing these tricks with the zeros and the ones, I'm able to get this independent set. And it's of size about n over 4. Why the assignment of 0 and 1 is random? Why do you take like that? Otherwise, you may end up having all zeros and all ones if I, because I don't know the linked list order. So I'm assigning zeros and ones somehow in the blocks without knowing the linked list. And if I accidentally get all zeros and all ones, I'm, uh, I'm only going to get one thing in an independent set that's too small. If I do it randomly, you know, like on, on average, if you look at any pair independently, one quarter of the time it'll have a zero and then a one. Right, and so that works out. Okay. There's a way to do it deterministically, it's a bit, it's a bit trickier. So. Okay. so since the algorithm, is, since you're assigning zero and one randomly, it, it does not guarantee that you'll get a set greater than n by four. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. There's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you a simpler algorithm to do it. There's a more complicated way to do it that's, that's deterministic. Well, so, so, if, so, so let's say I wanted it was greater than n over 8, right? So the probability of it being less than n over 8 is going to be really small. And that'll still, that'll just increase the runtime by a factor 2 later. Um, what's going to happen is if that does occur, I can keep track of how big this Q is. And if it's less than that, then I just run it again. And the next time it'll probably be um, bigger than over it. I mean, if, uh, instead of following a random order, if we do it in a deterministic way, say two zeros and two ones, then we are guaranteed that it will be exactly equal to n by four. Well, the problem is I'm doing it in the block order, and I don't know how this corresponds with the linked list order. So this, I, I need to, this is the linked list order, right? This is, and I don't know this ahead of time. Right, so, the, so I don't know this. So it, if I did 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 in the block order, it may have been such that all the zeros came first in the linked list order, then all the ones, because there was someone who was being kind of really devious and they ordered stuff, so my algorithm is correct. So, um, you have to, you know, and so if you randomize it, then then they they can't control your randomness and they can't screw you. So this is a common trick in randomizing. Does this linked list mean stack linked list? This is the linked list order here, which I don't know. I don't know this ordering. I I get the block ordering. The block ordering is my input, right? Um, Just one more question. I issue simple for the independent set. I is the independent set, yes. So successor of V is the point, is what exactly? The, the successor of V is going to be the next thing in the linked list order. The, the, this is um, next in linked list. So in this element, you have stored V1 and successor of V1. So this is the pointer. It's the pointer, yeah, it's the pointer. 
Okay, I don't believe this algorithm works. <laughs> okay. Um, do, do you want to uh, say why or do you want? No, I want proof. You want? You want? Okay. Um, what, what, what part don't you are you confused about? If I give you, if I just give you a linked list, okay, I yeah. give you the pointers. You don't know anything about them because they can be randomly. So the, the I can give you the same. I can give you the priority of Q ordering of the pointers, okay, and then I can give you n permutations. In fact, n, n permutations of the linked list, but the pointers will be the same in the, in the priority queue. But the ordering of the pointers is going to correspond with the block order. Okay, so so I'm going to change the input a little bit so it's a bit easier to believe that it works, and you can ex make it generalized. Assume that the the input is an array of size n. Okay, and the successor actually is an index into this array. Okay, so the successor says the next, the the the, uh, the linked list order of the thing after v1 is in location um, 62. So it points to a location in the array. Okay, do, do you believe, would you believe the algorithm if, if that was the input? No. Um, but so, because it can point left or right. Yeah, but it will sometimes point afterwards, sometimes point before, but I put it in the priority queue, and then the priority queue will order them, so on the next scan of the data. But you, you're ordering only on the pointers, right? Not in the, on the... So, so think of... Right, so, so what it's doing is it's putting it, so I'm, I'm leaving a message for myself. So let's say everyone's, everyone's running a race that's around the track. Right? And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, leave a message and everyone is, is uh, maintaining the same order around the track when they're running. So no one passes anyone. Say, I want to leave a message for someone who's um, the 62th place in the race. So then, and then I, I put this in a priority queue and everyone is putting a message to a distinct uh, like person in the race. And so the priority queue orders them, and then the next time they run around the track, the first, per the first person gets the first thing from the priority queue that's ordered number one. The second person gets the next thing from the priority queue that's ordered number two. So someone elsewhere in the, in the race can leave them a message, and the priority queue sorts it for them. So, uh, okay, so, so I think this is a tricky idea, so let me go through a small example. Um, so let's say that my input here is going to be, um, so let's say it's v2 and it's going to link to 6. So, okay, so, so this is going to be v, v4 and this is going to link to 3. This is V5. Uh, it's going to link to uh, 7. This is going to be V1. It's going to link to 1. It's going to be V3. It's going to link to 2. It's going to be V6. It'll link to 7. It's going to be V7, and it's going to have a null. Okay? So, so this is my input. The the linked list looks like v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, v6, v7. Okay? What's going to happen is I'm going to I'm going to always scan the data in this order. This guy is going to put this message in the in the priority queue, um, so it's going to have things put in in the order six, and this was have a message associated with with, with uh, node two. The next thing will be put in, in order three, a message from node um, from node four. It's going to be number seven, a message from node five. It's going to be uh, a one with message from node one, a so two with message 
from node three, seven with message from node six, and uh, and this one doesn't have a message. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this again, and each time I'm going to extract the minimum thing from the priority queue. I don't see that this is the right reconstruction from the data. V2 points to the sixth element. Which V2 points to the sixth element. So I'm putting something in with the key. No, no, no. Which is the the sixth element would be which one? On the the V6, right? Yeah. Oh, I I had a. This should be five. Sorry. Thanks. And I have seven in here twice. And V1 points to one, v which is V2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. V5 points to six. Okay, when you construct these on the flies, okay. so thanks. So this points to six. Okay. One, two, three, I will four. four. What's wrong here? Uh, nothing should point to four. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. So what's going to happen? I'm going to read through again. This element is going to get a message from one, right? From V1, that's where its message is from. It's the lowest thing here. This guy is gonna get a message from three. This guy is gonna get a message from four. It's the lowest thing left here. Um, this guy is gonna get a message from uh, Um, see, th this one is the first thing in the list, and you need a special case here, so you need to s make sure that the pointer is pointing to, to the right thing. Um, so there's nothing with value 4, so you essentially skip this one, it's the head of the list. This one will get a message from 5, um, or from 2. This one will get a message from 5, and this one will get a message from 6. Okay, got it. Okay, now if you look, every node has a message from the node before it. V2 is one from one, V4 is one from three, V5 is one from four. Okay, V3 from, and so forth. So I've managed to pass information by a second scan using the priority queue. Okay, good. Yes, um, so this is pretty tricky. So this is, this is kind of uh, the crux of how every, everything will work. So it's it's good we spent spent time going over this in more detail. So this condition corresponds to the explanation that uh, the if the predecessor is one zero and its value is one. Like the condition here, you know what? First of all, you just put them in the order, right? And then you ask them, okay, am I gonna choose? Is there a chance that I'm gonna choose the next one? If it's zero, then I won't. And then I just check if I'm going to choose myself, if I'm one. And if I set one, I always put myself in because I'm not going to put the next one. Oh, so you're, you're talking about whether it's really an independent set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the condition, you're, you're asking about this condition, if clause, right? The, the if clause here for the independent set, yeah. So this means the predecessor, so once I've done this, this priority queue trick, mm -hmm. I've passed information about my predecessor. So now when I can examine something, I can look at my value and my predecessor's value and use that to determine whether I go in independent set. And it needs to be a zero or one. And based on this ordering, the, the things that have a zero and then the one, you, you put the ones in, this set will be independent. Because right. if it's the one before it, had, this can't be a one. The one after it can't have a zero before it. So it has to be independent. So if this Zero and one randomly. Uh, I don't know what does it show. It's kind of just the code. It's kind of um, I'm I'm uh, I, I'm I'm assigning it a, a, a random bit, and I'm using that bit to enforce that the things that return are independent. Set. It's it's just it's kind of a. For example, for this example, we don't need. To. So th th this is the linked list order, right? Mm -hmm. This is T of V of the first thing in the linked. This is T of E of the second thing in the linked list. If I have this order, if I only take the ones that have the zero before them, 
the ones will be an independent set. This is kind of uh, just just a trick. So the assignment so is done over the priority queue or the elements in the linked list? The, the, the randomness is, is independent. I can do it on the fly. The, 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 it's, I'm going to get something that's size greater than number four is probably one half. And to prove that this is uh, expected to be bigger than n of four, do you need to turn on bonds to do this? Um, you can just look at the expected expected value looking at these independently. Because you need to. Uh, you can you can refine the bound of the turn off bound. We'll talk about turn off bounds a lot more in the streaming section. Mm -hmm. So I'll show some more examples of those. Here I don't. I can. Because I, you're I, looking, I don't mention so you're much looking at the pairs, right? You need, you're looking at what's the probability of getting a pair of one yeah. together, right? That's yeah. what I mean. So if you think. A pair of bits is random, that's one fourth. Mm. It's zero and then a one. So that's that's what you get about number four. Mm. So uh, for this example, you follow this SN2 this algorithm? Yes, so I ran this algorithm with the the only exception of this guy be the head of the list. I need I, I that's why I needed to pass something special about um, yeah, I, I, I have to check, um, so, and, um, and, and, and the key is equal to V. So if the key is not equal to V, then I kind of want to save it for the next element. I need to do a couple special cases there to handle the head of the list. But otherwise, I'm, I simulated this algorithm right here in this small thing. Okay, so, so so now I'm going to show how to use this independent set um, to do um, list ranking. Okay, and I'm going to kind of outline it, um, kind of the structure of it, and then we're going to, um, as we have time, we're going to go through a couple more examples of doing this these scans with priority queues to pass information. So you'll get a couple more examples of of how to pass information properly. Okay, so um, so we're going to do this um, list ranking on a input list L. Okay, and so the the first step is um, set R of V equals to one um, for all V. And I can do a single pass to do this, um, or I can uh, do it with some of the other passes. So I'm just going to write it. Okay. So, so then I'm going to um, I'm going to find an independent um, set on on L. And the, and the, what's, what's the R and the R and the all right, it's it's going to be the rank. Uh, the rank here is is the, the rank is the number of nodes that precede this in the linked list plus one. The plus one is so that I can set the first thing to be a rank one instead of zero. Um, okay. All right. So so now I'm going to have two kind of black boxes. And at the end, uh, everything is, is, is going to be right. These black boxes are going to be instances of this scans with the priority queues when I'm passing information. What I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to create, I'm, I'm going to run um, list ranking on a list L prime. And L prime is basically going to be L. Um, minus the independent set. But, so th the tricky part now is I want to create this new list, and the thing is I've jumped over some of these nodes, so I need to kind of pass the pointers. I need to skip forward. Say I had this linked list, and three I want to take out. I need to connect this pointer up to V4. So that's what's going on here. 
is creating this L prime. What's going on here is kind of updating the rank information. I'm going to kind of compress it, and then I need to push the rank information back out to the nodes I skipped over. So I'll, I'll, I'll do this second, and this will allow me to answer it correctly. You'll have to assume that this will do what it's supposed to be doing. And also, I'll describe this first. How do we create this list L prime? Okay. Um, and we're going to do this with three scans. Um, th there might be a simpler way how to do this. When I was reading up on this a little bit, the 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 the, the text on this would all often skip over some of the details. So I'm, I'm hoping I I. I, I you know, I, I get these right. There may be a slightly simpler way of doing this, but okay. Um, let me expand this out here. So, so I'm going to do scan number one. Um, so I'm going to say if v is going to be an L. So let me. So usually this slash means a is a is. Um, it's called the set minus, but let me say it's the set L minus the elements in the set high. It's just notation. So once I have the independent set, I'm going to have it in a queue, and I'm going to read through it, and if it's the front thing on the queue, then I know it's an independent set. If it's something else, I know it's not. Um, and then I want to get the next elements. So what I'll do is I'll pop it off and put it at the back of the queue for the next time through. And I probably need something to demark the, the end of this. But I'm gonna, I can scan and check whether it's an independent set by maintaining a Q for I. Okay. So now I'm going to set um, the successor in the list L L prime of V is equal to the successor of L of V. Um, and I'm going to put, I'm, let's see, I'm going to insert in priority queue one. I'm going to go through like four or five different priority queues um, with key equals to successor of the, okay? And two. Um, what, what's the difference between um, six, six successor L and then there's a smudge? So, so, so the, the difficulty, and I want to create this oh, list L prime. prime. Yeah, okay. this is L, L prime. I want to create this L prime. The difficulty is linking up the points I've skipped over. And so why I need this to be independent set is I only want to skip over at most one element. Otherwise, it just becomes trickier, even trickier to link. So that's why the independent set part is going to be important here. Okay. So if V is in I, then let's, let's call this A just so this is clear. Then So I'm going to get some node which is going to be V. So, so the, the right picture in your head is going to be, you're going to have some node V, it's going to point to some node A, and then this is going to point to some node S. Right, so this is in, going to be in L minus I, this is in I, and this is in L minus I. I know if this is an I, these both cannot be an I. Okay. Um, so now I've gotten this, this uh, this this previous one that linked to A. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna insert into a new priority Q two. Um, so I'm gonna set the key here um, is going to be um, what is this uh, location V. So I'm, I'm going back now to this, this uh, I'm passing something back to this guy. And I'm going to also pass to it this value um, successor of A. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm also going to insert in a priority queue three, and this time with the key of uh, um, A, I guess I'm passing back to, maybe I don't even need this step. Um, yeah, I think I can, I'm gonna, I haven't thought this through, but I think I can skip this step and I can do, um, Successor L prime of V. Um, then I'm going to do uh, S is going to be the um, delete min of the priory Q2. So now I've gotten the successor of A passed back to V, and I'm going to set the successor of in in list L prime of V. This is going to be equal to S. Okay. Um, and I'm going to push uh, B onto um, L prime. Right. So I need to store this in a separate queue. So this, so this is basically going to be. Uh, So, so this L prime is now V and Q. So I pushed it on with the block information um, with this um, successor. So um, does everyone believe that um, this, th this has given me a list L, L prime? I've, I've been managed to pass the successor of A back to V using three scans and two Qs. So there's there's something else I so, so this is what goes in in here. Okay, the, the, there's something else I needed to do here. I needed to increment the the value here. I think I can do this in this next this next. Step. So so a is not an L prime. Now I'm going to have a new pointer here, this is part of L prime. Right, so, so what I've done is I've gotten this pointer and I've passed it back to D. Okay, and this is another of the same trick where I can make multiple scans and with the priority queue I can pass information. Okay, so I think actually I'm going to skip the second part here. You need to update the rank now when you do this. And basically, on the next scan over, you uh, what you want to do is you're you're, you're going to increment the, the the rank of everything that comes after something that's skipped, um, and then you can um, eventually you get down to a single element, and so you're going to push push the rank forward for everything except the first element, which is never comes after something that was skipped, and you can work out so you can get the rank here as well. But I want to talk about how you can use this for other this techniques for more general sorts of graph algorithms because we're running out a little bit. So the other thing I'll mention is that it was a, the other reason it was important that the independent set was at, um, at least a constant fraction of it. And so then when I run this recursively, 
Um, this is going to run at um, at least a constant fraction of the time here. So essentially, this is linear in the cost of this algorithm. The cost of this algorithm is going to be sort um, so, so, sort of an IOs. I'm only making linear scans by maintaining the, the this priority queue. And so remember, the amortized cost is one over b times the sorting log term. So if I do this n times, I get the right, um, the, 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 I, I get sorting IOs to solve this list ranking problem. So there's some details to fill in, but hopefully you get kind of the general idea of, of how, how you can do these sorts of outcomes. Okay, so let me, um, okay, so let me ask a couple of, of questions. Room over here. Okay, so, so what if I wanted, to do the same thing, the same sort of thing on, yeah, so, 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 so let's say I have a, a tree, right, and I'm going to have a root, and it's going to link to, well, let's say it's a binary tree, um, so it's, this is going to be child one, child two, you know, this is grandchild one, grandchild two, grandchild three, and and, and so forth, okay? So there's something in a tree that's called a topological ordering. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this ordering has the property that um, if V comes after V prime, then V is not an um, ancestor of V prime. Okay, so so that means that the root has to come first because it's the ancestor of everything else. C one and C two, I don't care the ordering, but if I have a grandchild G three, it has to come after C two because if it became before then C2 would have come after G3 and I would have violated this condition. G3 can come before C1, that's okay. Um, typically you kind of do things, you, maybe you want to do it so the things that are higher are, are above first. Okay. So, so here, this list ranking, I'm getting an ordering of, of the linked list. This is a similar problem now, right? I've got these, each node, so what, how I store this, is a node and its links, okay? So this is one unit of information. And I want to take this unordered information and create some topological order. And basically the algorithm is gonna be almost exactly the same. I'm gonna create a large independent set and I can use a similar thing with flipping coins to do it or there are, there are better ways there. There are, there are deterministic ways too. Um, and, uh, and then I'm gonna run a similar thing to list ranking with independent set. I'm gonna use, I can still pass things in the priority queue um, because the pointers are the, determine the order in which I scan over them. Um, and so I can still pass things to um, the children even if they come before me in the, in the block order. So I can still pass information, and I can still use the same trick in order to get a topological order. Now once I have a topological ordering, it's a lot easier to do um, certain sorts of things. Um, so let's say I wanted to do, um, so, so, so I wanted um, to do the, assign for each node the height of it in, in the tree. Oh, I'll, I'll mention before I do a tr this a tree, I can also do the same thing if I also have a DAG. So a DAG is a directed acyclic graph. That means that, um, what this means is that there's still a total ordering of the things. So this means that there are no cycles in the ordering of edges. I can't ever get back to something. So that means there's, um, it doesn't need a single root, but there's a, there's, there, you can give it a consistent topological order. And the same sort of algorithm works. Um, so, okay, so, so now if I want to say the, um, 
the height in a tree, um, how would I design an algorithm to um, give give the height in a tree? I can assume I already have the topological order. So I've 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 assigned them some order and then I sorted them, and so now they're in black order in the topological order. Okay, we just start from at the bottom. So we know that we start with the height one, and then we, when we go up, we just go whether we're connected, and we just sum up one plus one or two, and then the next one sums this one, two plus one, and we, that's how we come up there. So but how do you know you're at the bottom? How do you know you're at the bottom? Oh, we do this recursively, this link. Recursively. So I could have G3 before C1, and I could it's, it's hard to know. I don't have them stored by on the subtrees. Um, I could. I'm not sure how easy it is to kind of take this whole tree and store it after another tree. But that, so. Um, no, but if you look at what we're gonna do, I mean, at least I imagined here on the link list, we're gonna take some notes out, and so relink the link list, and then we're gonna take again some notes out and relink. Yeah. So, so it, there are other algorithms that need this trick where you take some You don't actually need to be do a point. It, it, it's to be simpler. I'm going to need, uh, I think, one or two passes with the priority queue. Yeah, I, I only need one pass with the priority queue. I don't need multiple passes. But I'm going to use the priority queue trick again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan it, and I'm going to pass the, and every time I see an element, I'm going to have the, the property that I have information from all of its, uh, um, I can even do this with the DAG if the DAG has a root. Let's say the DAG has a unique, um, has a unique root, but I have some other edges like this. Okay. So what I can do is I can I can do this and I can send here. I'm going to put in a priority queue information to pass to each of its children, and when I get to this one. I have all the information from all of its parents, right? So I'm going to assume I have all the information. I take the min of all their heights, and I add one to that. And then I pass that information to all of my children through a priority queue. And then when I get them, I can delete min off the priority queue, um, all the things which belong to its parents. And then I can do the same operation. So. And, and now I only need one pass. Once I took the this topological ordering is going to take several passes, and this is you really want to minimize the number of passes. Once I have it this way, then most algorithms I can do in a single pass, single scan. I need to maintain the priority queue so it's still sort um, um, the same time to sort, but I, I've minimized the times I make a pass over the day. Okay, so. One of the other major challenges in dealing with graphs is that you don't, if, if I restrict that the graph is planar, I can somehow use the planar embedding to divide things up. Or if I have special cases like it's a DAG or it's a binary tree so the number of edges is small, then I can treat each node in its adjacency list as being constant size. But sometimes the adjacency list of a single node can be on the, you know, it can point to half of the other nodes. And so storing the adjacency list like may a require... Like a telephone switch. What? Like a telephone uh, switch yeah, that points yeah. up to about 10,000. Right, or like extensions. all the people who are, um, who are following Ashton Kutcher on, on Twitter. Right? <laughs> all the nodes pointing to him at something like a tenth of Twitter or something like that. Um, so so th there are these nodes that have really high degree. And these nodes, their adjacent list needs to be stored on multiple blocks. Other nodes take up like a significant fraction of a block, but not all of a block. So you don't want to you know, use a whole block for that either. Um, so dealing with these turns out to be a major difficulty in doing this. In this, I was passing stuff forward, but if I have to pass forward an entire block of information or a part of a block, it becomes kind of um, I, I can do it because based on the number of edges, I only pass each edge once. Um, but if I'm doing more complicated things like uh, like a depth first search or a breadth first search, this becomes much trickier. And the algorithms are not you, and you don't get these n over b terms anymore. You only 
I think all of them have, like the number of IOs is proportional to the number of vertices or the number of edges. Um, so the bounds are end up being much worse than before. I think there's maybe some slight theoretical improvements, but there's a lot more difficulty in dealing with general graphs. So, okay, so I, I hope I've given kind of a sense of the challenges of dealing with graphs, some more advanced sort of techniques here. Um, but graphs in this, there's still a lot of challenging, challenging problems here, um, which aren't completely solved. There was very recently a paper that closed counting triangles in, in, in sigma, and we'll, I've mentioned this paper to some of you. We'll talk about counting triangles in MapReduce later on. Um, but that was a problem that had been open for a while, and now they finally solved that. So it's still an active research area on how to do this. Um, OK, so a reminder, no class next Wednesday. I'm traveling. Next Friday, I'll give an overview of streaming algorithms, and we'll start a new section. So if you have questions on IRA efficient algorithms in general, now's the time to ask. We'll visit some aspects of them later in the class, but otherwise we'll be talking about other sorts of parameters.